welcome to another episode of the Cozy Cottage Crochet Podcast. My name is Hannah, this is Nova, and this is a podcast all about crochet, a little Ooh. bit of knitting, sometimes sewing, and generally living the yarniest life possible in St. Petersburg, Florida, where I live. <sighs> this one's about ready for a nap, and I am bribing her with the all magical pretzel <laughs> to do this intro with me, because I've tried to record it twice already, and she was just doing <sighs> this the whole time. <laughs> yeah, can you say hi to your biggest fans? No, oh, you are waving, so cute. Mwah. It's been quite an intense two weeks, but I do have some progress to show you. I worked a few rows on my Skyrim cardigan, I knit a little bit on a sock and a hat, and I have one big crochet project that I have gone through about two and a half balls of yarn on. So that is where the bulk of my work has been. Hi. <laughs> you showing everyone your pretzel? <laughs> You got a pretzel? I got a pretzel. I got a pretzel. I got a pretzel. Hey, 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 hey. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> and a pom pom on top because her hair keeps getting in her eyes. If you're looking for me anywhere on the interweb, you can find me as The Cozy Cottage Crochet on Instagram and Facebook. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, inquiries of any kind related to the podcast, please shoot me an email. That is the best way to get a hold of me. My email address is thecozycottagecrochet at gmail.com. And of course we have the Love Your Stash Cal going on right now until the end of March. The only rule is the yarn had to have entered your stash before January 1st of 2022. <coughs> Goodness, are you okay? Are you choking on a pretzel? Are you okay? Nova, are you okay? Are you okay? Are you okay, Nova? <laughs> you liked that? Silly. We spend a lot of our day being very silly. I don't even know what I was saying. Haha, <laughs> 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 ha, that was your goal to distract me. Um, it's going on till the end of March. Whips are allowed because they're part of your stash. You can do any fiber craft. You can knit, you can crochet, you can tat, you can weave, you can spin, you can embroider, you can cross stitch, however you want to do it. As long as the fiber entered your stash before January 1st, 2022, you can enter. We have a Ravelry thread set up for this as well as a hashtag, which is love your stash cal. We're using the same, we did this a couple years ago. Um, we're using the same hashtag that we did before. Nova, is it night night time? Oh, did you see how quickly that smile changed to a sad face? Because somebody doesn't want night night time, but mommy does. Mommy very much wants night night time so I can record this podcast. <laughs> okay, and through the magic of video editing, I am going to put this one to bed. <laughs> You wave, 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 and then I shall be back and we shall talk all things yarn. Hello, as you can see, I'm wearing a different attire. I'm wearing my granny stripe cardigan now, and that is because the baby did not go to sleep. <laughs> it is now 1.45 p.m. I truly don't know how long I will have to record this. She went down just now, went to sleep, or at least seemed like she was asleep, then wailed for a few minutes, and then is down again. So this may be a really short episode. Hopefully we can get it done. This morning she spent 40 minutes wailing instead of having a nap. What is life? What is life? So right now, the baby is down. We shall fingers cross ourselves, toes, hair, everything that can be crossed, that it stays that way. So I have a few things to show you. I have three knitting projects, all of which have had a little bit of work, and then one crochet project that has taken the bulk of my time. So I think I'm gonna save the crochet project for last. And I'll just start with the knitting project that's closest to me, and it's a pair of socks. <laughs> the, you saw this pair of socks last time. In fact, you've seen all of these projects last time. They're just updates. And last time I had finished one sock. So I have been working on the second sock. And let me show you, this is a sock blank that was a gift from Lisa. And it is this yarn company in the colorway Coral Cove. It's the first time I've ever worked with a sock blank. This is how much is left. Ooh. So it's like a one of a kind painted sock blank. This is the sock that I finished and showed you last time. So it's a shorty sock. I want to make some more shorty socks for my sock drawer. 
So that's the first one. And then last time I had cast on the second sock and done like two rows, <laughs> two rounds of the ribbing. So I have actually made some progress on this. If I can get it untangled. I have finished the ribbing. So the cuff is done. This part is done. And I have finished the heel and done one round on the foot. So this is what it, it's on a needle. So it's not gonna like show you properly, but this is what it looks like. So the heel cup is done. I am using my trusty Chowgu Red Lace 2.25 millimeter nine inch circular needles that will be on this needle until I get to the toe decreases and I'll switch to magic loop. I can do everything possible. Even if I was doing a, needle, a heel flap and gusset, I would still do it on nine inch circulars because I don't like magic loop and I loathe VPNs. And going around in circles is the only thing I like about knitting. That and stockinette. There's something so magical about stockinette. So this sock is gonna be different from the other sock because the sock blank doesn't repeat. It's not like a repeating colorway. And you can even see the heel on the first sock is blue, bluish. This one is much, much lighter. It has a little bit of blue underneath, but we're, I think we're about to get into some blue. Yeah, we're about to get into this part. So that should make the foot darker, but I still think that overall this sock is going to be a lot lighter than this sock. So really, really <laughs> threw it on the floor. Ha, <sighs> what a podcast episode happens every time. So yeah, I'm really happy with this sock and I'm really glad that I'm done with the heel on this one. This is the Sock Exploration Shadow Wrap Heel by Denise, who is Earth Tones Girl. I love this heel. I did have a complete brain fart and had to look up the pattern because I couldn't remember how many short rows to do. I was like, I think for my size, I think I need to do like 11 but maybe it's 10, but maybe it's 11 and I had to look. <laughs> but I glanced at that and then I didn't look at the pattern at all for the rest of the heel. I've got it pretty much memorized. And then I just use plain stockinette for another five and a half inches of the foot. And then I do Mina's rounded toe from Mina's vanilla sock recipe, or it might be Mina's two at a time sock recipe. Mina is the knitting expat. And I love, 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 love that toe. Such a good toe. So one whole cuff and heel has been done in the last two weeks. Excited. The hat I am working on has seen a little bit of love. It is in. <laughs> you are getting your bi-weekly dose of alpaca butt. Alpaca butt. It's my favorite part about this bag. I have done a small amount on this. I'll probably be working on this tonight. Unless of course I get obsessed with my crochet project again because I am kind of obsessed with my crochet project. It's been getting all the love. Last time my Skyrim cardigan got all the love, this time it's my crochet project. So I'm holding two yarns double. This is a fingering weight Roar Spats wool mice. It is 80% merino, 20% nylon, I think. And I'm holding it with Ice Yarns Kid Mohair, which is 30% mohair, 30% acrylic, and 40% nylon. These are quite tangled. These two together are making the most beautiful, beautiful hat. And I really kind of enjoy holding two yarns together. This is the Muscle Burra hat by Isolde Teague. It's basically a stockinette cap. You start at one end, you do increases, you knit straight for a very long time and then you do decreases and you close the hat up and then you flip one part inside the other so it becomes a double layered hat. And you can see the halo, <sighs> so fuzzy. This stitch marker right there is where I was last time. So I've done all of this, that's a couple inches. And you may be like, why are there three stitch markers? Because this is my beginning of the round stitch marker. It's a little gingerbread guy, he's so cute. And then these are my stitch markers for I will do decreases once I get to the end. I usually have two stitch markers on a project. One is for when I did the last podcast episode. So after I did the last podcast episode, this one got moved immediately. So after this podcast episode, this one's gonna jump up here. And then this one is how much I get accomplished in one sitting. So you can see that the last time I sat down, I did probably an inch on this hat. The plain stockinette is gorgeous. I love the color, I love the texture. It's so tonal. From far away, it just looks like an amazing burgundy, but up close, it has all of this color variation. 
and I'm in love with it. So this may get some love tonight. It is a gift and I would like to get it finished. We'll see. <laughs> Everything in my life seems very tenuous at the moment. That's knitting project number two. And knitting project number three is of course my Skyrim cardigan. Living in my giant bucket bag that my best friend Caitlin made me. This pattern, I am almost, in fact, I am ready to start the final color. Can you believe it? This is the long line cardigan by Hohi Locatelli, who is a truly amazing pattern designer. And I just two nights ago finished the last row of straight color for color number seven of eight on the body. So I now have 12 rows of fade and 25 rows of color eight and then the bind off. And the last 13 or 15 or something like that rows of color eight will be one by one ribbing. <laughs> and it is a heck of a lot of stitches. It's about, let's see, does it tell me how many stitches it is? It doesn't say how many I have right now. I started with 132, but then I've done a bunch of increase rows for the hips and it doesn't say, not that I've been counting, but let's guess that I've got like over 150 stitches to do one by one ribbing on for 13 rows is gonna take me quite a while. So let's go through the colors because it's my favorite thing to do. And I will gently, gingerly pull out the cardigan. I talked about this at length last time, so I'm not gonna talk about it in that great of detail right now. I just wanna show you the colorways. These are yarns dyed on, based on Skyrim cities, dyed for me as a birthday present like three, four years ago by my lovely friend Leah, who is used to dye under the name Sheep Happens Yarn. So this top color is Solitude, Dawn Star, Winter Hold, Morthal, Wind Helm, White Run, and the super dark at the bottom is Riften. And we are just, this much left of Riften, we are just about to start the eighth and final color which is, I cannot see, Falk Wreath. It's the darkest of them all. Mm, so beautiful. You can see on my trusty stitch counter that is at 25 because I have indeed completed the 25th row of the seventh color. So pretty excited about that. I did only, I've only worked five rows on this since the last time I podcasted and it was all in one evening. So you can see it didn't, stitch marker did not move that much. <laughs> this is five rows. It's about half an inch. Mm, yeah, cause I think my gauge is 10 rows per inch. That is tiny y'all, 10 rows of stockinette stitch in one inch. You know how many rows of stockinette stitch total this is? It will be worth it though. It'll be worth it because this fade is the most magical thing I've ever seen. And is it crazy? Like, I'm definitely not going to have this finished for the Love Your Stash Cow by the end of March. There's literally no way. But maybe my goal can be to have the body of it finished for the Love Your Stash Cow at the end of March. It gives me eight weeks to do 12, 25, 35, 37 more rows, which is pretty good considering each row takes me 15 to 25 minutes, depending on if it's a knit or a pearl row. So that's quite a lot of knitting. But I did do all five rows in one glorious evening that I had some time to myself. My husband was studying, he's taking a course for his job. And I just put on some mindless TV of, I don't even remember what it was, some kind of baking show. And I knit on that. So good. Okay. I feel like I've been talking for ages even though it's only been 12 minutes. <laughs> because I'm nervous about baby waking up. I'm really nervous. Let's talk about the crochet project. Now I showed you a swatch of this last time and part that I had done, but that part got frogged because I blocked it and laid it flat and remeasured and my math was off by six stitches per four inches. And you may be like, that's not a big deal. That in fact is a big deal. So two things were wrong. One, my brain didn't work 
So the math didn't work. Like I clearly did not count correctly. That's the first problem. If your gauge is off, let's say if it was off by one stitch every four inches and the thing is 20 inches wide, that means that I would be off by five stitches. So that would be almost negligible. It would definitely make a difference if I had a garment, but it would be almost negligible for a wrap. Because I was off by six stitches every four inches, that is a crazy amount. So six times four is 24 stitches over the course of a 20 inch wide wrap. That is a huge amount of stitches. So I frogged what was done and I recalculated the math to use as much of the yarn as possible. Now, the other reason that I was looking at the yarn skin and I was like, why do I have this much yarn left? Like I should not have this much yarn. For the first part of the problem was my math was incorrect. The second part of the problem is I was calculating based on these were 100 gram skeins. So I weighed them all, um, but actually they're closer to 115 grams for each one, which <laughs> lucky me, that means I have more yarn to play with. I can totally work that out in the pattern, no problem. Um, whoever, I don't, these skeins probably came pre-done, pre-sorted essentially to the dyer. So who, <laughs> whatever machine or whatever company they came from was feeling really generous because there's an extra 15 grams in each of these skeins. Um, one of them had 116 grams, one of them had 114 grams. So it's pretty close to 115, which I very much appreciate. So I will have, I calculated it to use every possible scrap of yarn and I'll have a little nugget of each color less, left over. But I think I'm going to say, I was originally gonna say this uses 600 grams. I think I'm gonna say 650 to 700 um, for safety purposes. Now, just living in this bag, this says it's crafting season. That is a pen from Claudia of Crochet Luna, who is a dear friend and a delightful pin maker. She has, if you just want a little pick me up or something to add bling to your life, you definitely have to check out Claudia's Etsy shop. She has pens for all occasions, all crafting occasions. And they're so reasonably priced and like just delightful. This is the be long wrap. And I'm gonna show you the yarn first. You see that sneaky move? You only saw like a little teeny bit because I am through two skeins of yarn. So see, I have a little bit, of, little bitty nuggets left. This first one, the red, is the colorway I'm loved. And the orange is the colorway, of course it's folded on the inside, the colorway wildflower. So this is Eden's Fun Yarn. Eden, I will leave a link to her shop directly down below. She has some beautiful yarns that she's hand dyed and she reached out and so she's provided this yarn for yarn support for specifically this pattern and she so understood my vision of like what I wanted this wrap to be. So she dyed six skeins of yarn specifically for me in a rainbow. And this is her tag, Eden's Fun Yarn. It is marshmallow DK, meaning 100% superwash merino, 246 yards, 100 grams, except they're really 115 grams. Lucky me. So this is the colorway I'm loved. And this one, this little nug, is the colorway wildflower. And I'm just gonna do this, that way I can know these colors next time. And I will put those there. So red and orange, yellow, you can see I'm halfway through a skein already. Then green, whoop, blue, and crochet hook, <laughs> purple. The purple one's obviously my favorite. I love it so much. This was my original swatch that I had clearly measured the gauge incorrectly on. So my other swatch got frogged because it was 50 grams worth, of uh, maybe 40 grams, 40 grams of the red color. So that got frogged. This has been taking all of my time and I am so delighted with it, how it's turning out. So when I reworked the math, it meant that I could actually, the length I wanted to stay the same, it's gonna be about 72 inches, although crochet stretches this way, which is vertically, crochet stretches. So this was worked side to side, so it's gonna stretch this way, not this way. Um, so it's still gonna be 72 inches long, but now it's 19 inches wide, and I bet you you could block it to 20, which is much more delightful for a wrap than the 16 inches. So. I think I had 15 or 16 inches originally. 
on this wrap and with the gauge change I'm now at 19. So delightful. It starts right here. This is a wrap on the bias. So we've got all of the red, all of the orange, and we are halfway through the yellow and this is what it looks like so far. So anytime you do something on the bias, it's going to curl. Um, this is something you should know if you ever make any kind of a wrap or anything on the bias. It's going to curl on the edges. You have to block it. No amount of leaving your stitches loose on the end <laughs> will save you from the curl that happens on the bias wrap. But once you block it, it will stay. You do have to be careful, however, to make sure that you are loose on your stitches on the, the edge, especially any chain stitches, because your garment will only stretch as far as those stitches allow. So this part of the garment is actually more stretchy than the edge of the garment. So if you find you're working on a wrap on the bias or anything on the bias, and you find that it's like warping, not curling, what you need to do is either do more chains on the edge or do a really, really loose stitch so that it can have that stretch. And so what we have here, hopefully that was a helpful tip, <laughs> is we have some ribbing, solid panel, then we have ribbing in each color as a transition, solid panel with texture, and then I'll give you a close up. That is what it looks like. And I've kind of worked it, I wanted them to look like they're kind of bleeding or like dripping into each other. I'm really, really happy, especially with this yellow. It's so bright and cheery. Let's see, what is the name of the yellow colorway? It's colorway is called You're a Star. <laughs> That's so cute. Yes, you are a star. So this is yarn that Eden has dyed. So definitely if you have the resources and you're looking for some beautiful yarn, go check out Eden's Fun Yarn. Um, the pattern for this, like the actual how to do it, the instructions, is handwritten in a notebook <laughs> in my bag currently. I have had less than zero brain space to do any pattern writing, which has been very, very frustrating for me, actually. Let's just put this right there. Oh, and let me show you my stitch marker. It's a rainbow bead. Isn't that perfect? This is how much I did the last time I sat down. So last time, obviously, I was at the very beginning of this, <laughs> so I didn't need a stitch marker for the podcast, but this is what I did. Not last night, because I had small group, so this had to be Tuesday night, is what, that's what I did. We'll just leave that right there to look beautiful. Oh yes. Um, what was I saying? I've had less than zero brain space and it's very frustrating because I have the Omega blanket pattern is ready to go. I just have to take photos and edit them. <sighs> the pattern itself is actually written. And so as soon as that's done, my focus will then turn to the granny, the granny stripe cardigan, the DK version, the sample is done. Um, but I have not had any time to sit down and work on the pattern for it. So this is the fingering weight version of the granny stripe cardigan. It is just my favorite thing. It's probably my favorite thing I've ever made. And it's equally tied with <laughs> the DK version of my granny stripe cardigan, which I wish I had to show you. It's back in my room. And like I said, I am definitely not walking past the baby room. I even had to look at her just now to make sure she was still asleep. I'm so nervous about it. Um, and the yarn support for that came from a lovely yarn dyer named Shella, who is unique with fiber. I will link all of her shop and Instagram below as well. And make sure you're following both of these ladies because just working with their yarn has been a delightful experience. Working with Eden's Fun Yarn, these colors are so saturated and beautiful and tonal. And then working with Shella's yarn, if you've watched any of my previous podcast episodes, you've seen her beautiful yarn in the DK version of the Granny Stripe Cardigan. So I really want to work on that. I just have not had any time. And then of course this pattern is in the works as well. And then there must be one more. Am I working on one more pattern? I'm not actively working <laughs> on any more patterns, but there are several that are waiting in the ring wings. One of them, of course, is the queerly beloved cowl that will I ever have enough brain space to redo those cable hearts? I truly don't know. Someday. I have the obsidian cardigan, which has been on the back burner for quite some time. It's halfway done, the sample. I have... I think there's one more shawl pattern in my box of whips, a lace weight shawl pattern that I'm just not 
I'm just not entirely happy with it. And so it got put to the side and then I have wound up yarn. <laughs> I wound up yarn to start another pattern that I had an idea for, but I haven't even started it or looked at it. Everything has been a bit too much lately. So literally no brain space. And so I'm, I'm apologize to everyone who's waiting so patiently for the DK version of the granny stripe cardigan. I wish I had good news to give you. And then I was like, Oh, I'm working on the pattern right now. I'm just not, and barely have time to keep my head above water in terms of my job. And I don't know, it's just every, Fridays are generally the only time of day or the only time of week that I have any time to myself to work because um, my mom watches the baby on Fridays, which is delightful. And every single Friday this month, I have had some kind of meeting or something. So I haven't even accomplished all of the work that I need to do. And tomorrow, which is Friday, I will not be working at all. And I've been working frantically this week to try to get ahead a little bit. I won't be working at all because I'm getting mouth surgery literally so anxious about this. <laughs> so what had happened was I have bad teeth. <laughs> if you've been around, you know this. I have bad teeth, but I had cavities in like most of my teeth, especially in the back. However, since I was pregnant and postpartum, it has been much worse, like, and probably because I was sick for nine months. So I had one crown put on while I was pregnant. I have had three crowns since Nova came out and she's only been out like a year and a month and a half. So not that long. And one of those crowns had to have a root canal with it. Okay, fine. Except I still cannot eat on that tooth. My, it's sensitive. Even if I'm like tapping, just tapping it hurts. So the, is it orthodontist? The oral surgeon is what I'm gonna say. He looked at it and was like, well, they did like this 360 x-ray around my head to make sure there's no infection, etc. Because that can like kill you. There's no infection. It's basically my body just is very extra sensitive and my teeth and my gums have always been that way. So what he's going to do and skip forward a little bit if you this if things like this make you squeamish, he's going to cut underneath the tooth, remove a few millimeters of gum tissue and sew it back up so that the tooth itself has more room to like move around without hitting my sensitive gum. Does that sound crazy to you? And the lady called to remind me of the appointment and was like, oh my God. She didn't say, oh my God, that was an exaggeration. She was like, hi, she was so happy. I wanted to die. Hi, I'm just calling to remind you of your appointment on Friday. And I was like, yes, I'll be there. She's like, okay, well it's at 8 a.m. You have a $50 copay. You have to do all this stuff. I was like, no problem. I will be there, no problem. And then she was like, and I just want to remind you, she's like very California, like Valley Girl. I was like, I just want to remind you that you should eat a really good breakfast because you are going to be profoundly numb for the whole day. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> so I hate, I hate anything to do with the dentist. I don't hate the dentist personally. I just hate going to the dentist. I have never had any kind of mouth surgery unless you count like getting my wisdom teeth out 10, 12 years ago, 10 years ago, something like that. So yeah, I'm not looking forward to this at all. I'm gonna have stitches in my mouth. I'm sure once the anesthesia wears off, my mouth will be not happy. And that's tomorrow. I don't have any recovery time really. This was supposed to happen several weeks ago, but because Nova was sick, I had to reschedule it. So now, and I didn't have anything that day, but I don't have anything tomorrow technically except that. But Saturday I'm officiating a wedding and Sunday of course is church. And then next week is packed. February is packed. I don't, it's already February, but also January was like the longest month in the history of months. I don't understand what's happening with 2022. Do y'all feel this way about 2022? Maybe it's just me. I don't know. I don't have any, nothing came in. I don't have anything to show you um, other than the projects. One of these days I'm gonna finish a project, y'all. One of these days I am gonna finish a project. I'm just putting it out there in the universe. Y'all are my witnesses that someday, someday in a land far, far away, 
one of these things I just showed you will be done and finished, finished, finished so that I can quit showing you the same project every single podcast for the rest of my life. I have a feeling the Skyrim cardigan is going to be with us for like another year. <laughs> it's okay, right? It's not a competition. It's not a competition. I do want to have like interesting things to show you though. This will be finished because I can't stop working on it because it is so intuitive. I don't even look at my instructions at all. I just know exactly what's going to come next. So yeah, I do want to say thank you to everyone who left such lovely comments on the last video. I know it was kind of a bummer, um, but that's how I've been feeling lately. Honestly, it's kind of like a bummer. <laughs> Stuff is, life is really hard. It's really tough trying to get everything done. And I would say in the last two weeks since I podcasted, I've had one and a half <laughs> good days like good mental health days, which is not a great score. Not that anyone's keeping score. I would just like it to be more than that. I did f schedule an appointment with an OB, not the OB who delivered my baby. I don't have anything against her. I just don't feel like she's really going to listen to me having explained what the problem is. I feel like my hormones are still, there's something wrong with them. Like they're wildly out of balance. They have to be. I'm convinced. <laughs> so I've been to a naturopath already. That stuff didn't help. I've been to my primary care doctor and gotten blood work and it came back that everything was fine. So now I have made an appointment for March to see the OB that gave me all of my care when I had the ectopic pregnancy. She is just a delightful, wonderful person and I feel like she really listens <laughs> and she will actually be, you know, concerned about my complaints and not just be like, well, you're postpartum. So, you know, things are bound to be weird for a while. Um, she was, she has a very busy schedule and I didn't want to see anyone else other than her. So I have to wait till mid-March. So probably two more podcast episodes, but I'm specifically going so that they can do blood work and give me a hormone panel and tell me if something is out of whack with my hormones, because I really, really think it is. I feel like I'm PMSing all the time. I Maybe mean, not all the time, but like 50 to 70% of the month, depending on the month. That's too much. It's too much. I don't, it's too much. This face, that face should not be my life. I'm a happy person. <laughs> so yeah, I'm trying to find someone also that like specializes in postpartum care, postpartum mental health care in my local area, which has proven to be uh more exhausting than i planned <laughs> to just find someone so there there are several really really good postpartum counselors in the city where i live uh, but then none of them take insurance of course and uh, nothing against that like everybody needs to make a living and i understand the insurance is a pain to deal with like deeply i understand this but that means i can't see any of them because their fees are are very high Maybe they're not very high comparatively to what other people charge, but they're just, the copay for my insurance to see a counselor is $45. So I'm trying to find someone who specializes in postpartum counseling in St. Petersburg who will see me in person, not telehealth. And it is truly like pulling teeth. <laughs> like. I have been online with Cigna and they've been going around in circles. And first they were like, oh, we don't cover that at all. And I'm like, really? Because it says right here on my plan that I have a $45 copay to get counseling. And they were like, oh, well, we'll have to look into this. And then they were like, oh, yes, okay. It, it does cover some counseling appointments with $45 copay. And I was like, okay. So we've just been going around in circles. And I found there's a website called Postpartum Support International, which is a really, really great website resource. And they have like lists of people. And so I found some people on there, but they're not approved by Cigna. And so there's like two people that are on that list that are also on Cigna's list, but they only do telehealth. And I, I really feel strongly that I want to see someone in person. Not that I have anything against telehealth, but for me, it is much harder for me to actually say what I need and speak up about things that I'm struggling with in person. 
So like I can do this on a camera because no one else is looking back at me right now. <laughs> and I understand like y'all are all there. <sighs> I feel the support from you guys and it's beautiful. And I like, I, but it's much easier for me to talk to a camera um, or a Zoom meeting and say what I'm struggling with or what I need help with than it is for me to say that in person. And I need to practice saying that in person for sure. <laughs> and also I just, I, I feel like I need a personal connection. The last time I had seen a counselor was after my miscarriage and we did that for quite a while. I wanna say maybe six months or eight months. And of course the pandemic happened <laughs> during that. And so the last several sessions were telehealth and that was fine because we had already gone through some of the heavy stuff, quote unquote, at the beginning. And I already had this rapport with the therapist. And I understand, you know, that for some people, that's the only option. And if that's the only option, I guess I'll have to take it. But I just, it's, it's a lot of energy to try to like find someone. And I like Cigna keeps being like, oh, well, here's a list of people who are therapists who talk about anxiety. And I'm like, okay, yes. But what I need <laughs> is someone who specializes or at least has had some training in postpartum anxiety. There is a difference <laughs> between regular anxiety and postpartum anxiety. And Cygnus like, no, 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 just go see this person over here. And I'm like, it's not the same. It's not the same. So this is a, kind of a frustrating situation, but at least I know that I can, if I can find someone, <laughs> I can get it under my insurance with a $45 copay. I still have not been able to get out of them how many sessions, so I have to work up the resolve to call them again <laughs> and find how many sessions are covered before it's out of pocket. But hopefully I can find someone. I There's like several things that are giving me anxiety right now and it's getting like, it's starting to affect my sleep. And by that I mean, I can't stay asleep. And this is how it was in 2019 when I was very anxious is I, I, I was very consciously anxious throughout the day back then, um, but I would spend all my energy keeping it together. And then at night I would go to bed and I would wake up in the middle of the night panicking, like almost having panic attacks. It is not to that level at all. And I am not expending all of my energy trying to keep it together during the day. It's almost like sometimes I'm very anxious and I can feel it in my body, but mostly it's like a subconscious anxiety. And then I can't stay asleep at night. I'm not waking up panicking. Thank goodness. <laughs> and, or maybe it just hasn't got to that point yet. But I can't stay asleep. Like my, my brain, it's almost like I'm on high alert all the time. And I don't know how to turn that off in the middle of the night. Like during the day, I can like talk myself down and be like, okay, it's no big deal. Like we're going to get through this. I can do my breathing exercises and we're fine. But at night when I'm asleep, like, how do I tell my brain that it's safe? I don't, because clearly it doesn't think it's safe because I keep waking up like all the time. I think I hear Nova cry when she's not crying um, or she is crying. <laughs> and, but every time she cries or fusses in the night, it's like I have adrenaline. And so after the first time she cries, I could probably go back to sleep. But after the fourth or fifth time she makes a noise, like I'm not going back to sleep for like an hour and a half <laughs> until the adrenaline gets out of my body. And I think one of the biggest things that gives me anxiety about her, not about her, but in general, is that I cannot trust if she's going to go to sleep or not. Because I never know. And this has been this way since Thanksgiving. If you if you watched new my Vlogmas videos, you'll know. Um, she just had such a tough time with sleep the, almost the whole month of December. And it seems to have continued. It's not nearly as bad as it was, but I just can't, I can never trust that when I put her in her crib, she's gonna go to sleep. And this week, it's been even for naps. Like this morning, she wailed for 40 minutes instead of sleeping. And there, there's like nothing I can do about it. Like, I don't think she's teething. She didn't, she had gas drops. There wasn't any farts coming out. Like, I don't know. She did not wanna be, like, oh, if I could rock her to sleep, I would, but she doesn't want me to do that. She just flails around. So I don't know. Yesterday, she also screamed for 40 minutes instead of napping. She almost didn't even get a nap in the afternoon, but she finally conked out. And it's not like I'm just leaving her to scream for that long. Like I'm there doing everything I can and she's just not having it. 
So, but then last night, went to sleep no problem. Was out at 7 p.m. in five minutes. <laughs> and we'll get days like that. Like we'll have a couple days. I mean, she'll string a few together where she'll go to bed just like the most peaceful, delightful, like happy to go to bed baby. And then we'll be, I'll be like, yeah, like we're on the right track. She's going to bed. And then the night that I least expect it, she will scream her head off for an hour. And I just don't know what to do about that. Maybe there's nothing we can do about it. And it's just a phase we have to get through. Um, but because I cannot trust that she's ever going to sleep, <laughs> I like that anxiety, I feel like is really, really big because it means I don't a get a break from her. And B, I don't get any time to work. Or like this morning, I didn't get to podcast. So now I'm podcasting now. But now I don't have time to edit the podcast before she gets up. So I'll have to do that tomorrow. So I don't know. It just, that's a big anxiety is her sleep. And I understand that her sleep or lack of sleep says nothing about my parenting skills. It says nothing about me as a parent. It has everything to do with her and her process that she's going through. It's just really hard for me when she doesn't sleep because there's so little margin <laughs> for me to like have a break. I'm trying to think if there's any, like I'm trying to pinpoint before I talk to a counselor, like what am I specifically anxious about? But I don't know other than that. I can't really say everything, but it seems like I just can't turn off the anxiety when I'm asleep. Like my, my body is now in a state of like constant high alert and probably has been for about four and a half weeks. And I, I, I do, I do all the exercises, <laughs> not physical, although some physical I have been doing but like my mental exercises that I learned the last time in 2019 and they don't seem to be making a difference. So I need, that's why I really want to see someone who specializes in postpartum support. So here I am <laughs> talking about my postpartum issues again on the internet, but I am, I know that it helps some of y'all like a lot. And I've gotten a couple messages from really, really lovely people who have said that when I share stuff like this, it helps them understand what their children or their grandchildren or their nieces and nephews or like any young parents are going through um, it helps it helps them know how to help better whereas before they would be like oh you know I'll come over and hold the baby and whatever um, but now they have like specific ways to help these new parents and that to me means everything in the world because there is, especially since the pandemic, just a lack of support all around for new parents. Um, and I think especially when you're brand new, you, like you, even if you ask for help, you don't know what you need help with. <laughs> you can't just be like everything, I don't know. So um, that really, really means everything to me that like, My ramblings on the internet are like actually helping real people and I do want to give y'all an update on the down there situation <laughs> this is where I get TMI so you can switch this off if you don't want to know but for a recap if you haven't been around I since Nova got sucked out with a vacuum um, I had a natural I had an epidural but I had like a natural vaginal birth um, I did not have a c-section that's what I mean by natural. Um, but she got stuck and her heart rate kept dropping. And I, we had, I had only been pushing for like an hour, two hours or something. Um, but she wouldn't like her, her, she couldn't come out because her face was like catching on my hip bone or something or my pelvic bone. And okay, that's fine. It's not a big deal, but her heart rate kept dropping. And after like the fifth time, her heart rate dropped into like the below 50, they were like, okay, we have to get this baby out. So they vacuumed her, which caused a tear. Um, and I understand tears are pretty common, et cetera, et cetera. The tear healed, um, but I have scar tissue where the tear was. 
and I had granulation tissue removed about four months after I gave birth. And in, gosh, November, October, November, I was still, that is almost a year later, still having pain. Um, and not just pain, like, I don't know how to say this without YouTube like censoring me for being R-rated. Not just pain when using things like tampons. Um, pain in general, like it was hurting often. And anytime I would try to be intimate with my husband, it would be very painful. And so I asked, it was something that was very hard for me and I asked for help. And because of all of you, I was able to go see a pelvic physical therapist. And I had my fourth appointment with her. We've been spacing them out about a month apart. Um, my fourth appointment with her last week. And I definitely still have some pain, but it is, it is a significant difference. Like, it's, it's so different that like, I actually am, I like have hope that the pain will go away eventually altogether. And I was able to pay for five sessions with her. So I have one more in March and I've been saving all my crochet pattern sales so I can maybe get another session in May, Mar March. Yeah, maybe in May, I can go back and see her one more time. Um, I, it has, it has been so, so good. And so she not only has been working on the scar tissue on the inside to break that up, which it, it has made, I would say in the last four weeks, I have noticed the biggest difference and it's just incredible. It's like so great to not have pain down there. But also we've been working really hard on me and my muscles because I could not keep my balance for anything. And this wasn't even a complaint when I went in, she just did a full body assessment and was like, do you lose your balance all the time? And I was like, yes, like, <sighs> yes i cannot keep my balance for anything i just fall over all the time and i was not stable so she's been giving me hip exercises to do that not only relax the muscles in the pelvic floor which helps with the internal pain but also have strengthened my body to the point where i don't think i have lost my balance at all like zero times in the last two weeks i'm just like stable now when i'm standing and walking and turning around i don't fall over at all and that may seem like a really small thing, but to me it's huge because I was constantly like catching myself on things, running into things, falling over because my the my hip muscles were so weak from nine months of carrying the baby like this. It kind of just pulled everything out of alignment. And so I only my glutes or my, yeah, I think my glutes were doing all of the work or something to support the baby, but the stabilizers weren't doing anything for that length of time. So that's the update. The update is, gosh, it's it's so good. It's so good to not have pain all the time and to not lose my balance all the time. Like, And the, the doctor that I'm seeing is just such a wonderful person. She's like a very safe space and I appreciate her so much. And she is pregnant um, after several miscarriages and I just, like I feel like we have a very similar connection, her and I, and I'm so happy for her and her baby that's growing inside of her. And I, I just am so thankful that I have been able to see her and that is because of you. And I'm not going to get sappy right now, okay? Because I do not have the emotional energy to cry today. <laughs> but just know that like, y'all have made a very tangible difference in my life since Nova arrived. Like you without your support, I wouldn't be saying I'd still be having pain. I don't know. So that just means everything in the world to me. So yeah, I know this is a very rambly episode. <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of exhausted. So that's probably why I don't really have a clear train of thought through anything. Baby is still sleeping, but she's rolling around, which means I don't have much time. So I will go ahead and wrap this up here. Definitely join the Love Your Stash Cow if you have anything in stash. I know you do. Whips are allowed until the end of March. I think March has 31 days. So March 31st. Use the thread on Ravelry. There's a link below to the Ravelry group or use the hashtag Love Your Stash Cow on Instagram. 
If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. You can hit subscribe if you want to be kept up to date on new videos on this channel. I do post a new podcast every two weeks on Saturday morning, Eastern Standard Time. And gosh, is there anything else? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, I do want to tell you one last little tidbit. And I wish I brought it over here, but you just have to imagine yesterday when Nova wailed for 40 minutes <laughs> instead of going to sleep in the afternoon, I had work to do, but I was so on edge and like hyped up after she finally went to sleep that instead I made a loaf of bread. I know bread was like a big thing during the pandemic that people were doing, but <laughs> I made a couple loaves of bread during the pandemic. I made some, just like a loaf of white bread. I used the recipe on the gold flour package, whatever recipe was on the back. And I made it specifically because it required like 10 to 15 minutes of kneading. And that bread got kneaded, let me tell you. I took out all of my aggression and all of my anxiety on that bread and I felt legitimately so much better. And then I had a delightful loaf of bread to eat. I still have half a loaf. You may be saying, didn't you make that last night? Did you eat half a loaf of bread? Yes. <laughs> yes, I did eat half a loaf of bread and I have no regrets. So yeah. <laughs> I don't know, pretty exciting times in, the, in my household. I made a loaf of bread to take out my aggression. But if you're feeling some kind of way and you just need to like do some body work and like get some aggression out and maybe it's cold outside, you can't go outside, you can't do a workout, make a loaf of bread. You need that bread. You tell it who's boss. It's you. You're the boss. Okay, I'm gonna stop rambling. The baby is doing this. That's what she's doing, which means I have 30 seconds. So until I see you again, be kind to yourself. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate you and I have nothing but love for you. And I'm sending you a virtual internet hug and happy February. <laughs> and I will see y'all next time. Bye friends.